All right. So, hey, everyone, and uh, welcome to yet another live session, the Thursday evening sessions. And I see the usual suspects. I see Harish, Michelle, Sachin, Sachin Suresh. So thank you all for being here. Um, you know, we'll probably have a few more people to join in. But today is a special day where I'm going to unveil uh, what I've been working on. I think I sent an email. Um, most of you would have gone through it, read through it. And uh, this is something I've been working on. And this is something I've been kind of dreaming about for um, for a really long time. And uh, I'm unveiling the next version of the system that we are building and bringing it to you. And I hope uh, this would help you uh, to move towards your goals from the perspective of uh, DevOps mastery, upscaling your career and uh, help you get there faster this year. That's the vision. So vision is same. The approach is what we're going to enhance. And today, um, I, before I unveil uh, the system and the new face of it, uh, I'm going to do a bit of a storytelling. And um, I was just going through uh, thinking about, um, you know, uh, creating this mind map uh, about what I'm going to talk about today. And I thought, um, since I'm unveiling this journey, uh, let me begin with uh, my journey, the journey of School of DevOps. Uh, for the people who do not know about it, or most of you may not be aware of all the aspects of this journey or all the uh, milestones in this journey and what happened. And uh, I was just going through my emails, just discovering uh, certain things at certain point in time, um, dating back to 2012, when it all started. So I'm going to begin with a quick journey or rather uh, narrating and doing a bit of a storytelling about it. Uh, via certain emails and the pictures and uh, certain things that uh, I have collected here. Uh, and it this journey starts back in 2012 when I was, um, you know, I think I was uh, five years in my career um, heading IT operations. And, you know, I started as a ops guy. Uh, it was almost like five and a half years, I believe. Um, before that, I had some internship experience. And even before that, I had, um, you know, uh, done stuff on Linux um, during my college days, which had helped me to get my internship that had helped me to get my job. And um, I worked for a startup, which got acquired by Adobe. So when I quit, I was uh, heading the IT operations for Adobe um, for India and uh, for one particular division in India. And uh, that's when I decided uh, let's let's jump into uh, the unknown. And uh, you know, I, I always had a dream of uh, doing something on my own. And I started with a DevOps, uh, not a DevOps consultancy, because at that time DevOps was not the keyword which was very uh, common. It was more about uh, uh, the things that I knew about, and that was AWS Cloud. Uh, that was about Puppet. And I had picked up Chef since uh, 2009 and onwards. Uh, Puppet was 2007, eight onwards. I started with that. And I knew about these technologies. Those were in demand at that time. Uh, there was no word for it called as DevOps. But I started with that consulting where I was helping people to build infrastructures on cloud, mainly AWS, automate it with Puppet, Chef, etc. And uh, that was the beginning of it. And 2012, I remember, was my first corporate training opportunity that I got um, back then. And it started with one opportunity. Then I got the second opportunity after like three months. And then it uh, became like once in a month. Then it became twice a month. Then it became like almost every week. And then people started asking me for, um, you know, uh, taking up trainings on weekends as well. And um, I didn't do that, of course, but um, that was, that is how it happened between 2012 and somewhere around 2013 onwards. Uh, end of 2013, I was doing full-time trainings along with um, two jobs rather, managing my consulting firm, building that and um, doing training during the days. And uh, that is what ha was happening there. 2013 was when I conceptualized, uh, 2012 was when I conceptualized uh, School of DevOps. And 2013 was when we bought the domain. So you can see the domain history here. This was first registered on 6th of December. Oh, that's really interesting because 6th of December happens to be my kid's birthday as well. Uh, very interesting. I just noticed it really. So 6th of December, 2013 was when uh, School of DevOps 
as was really born as a domain but it was conceptualized a year earlier since i started uh, with the training programs and so on right and initially it was mostly about uh, i had no courses at that time no video courses nothing uh, it was mostly about corporate trainings and i thought let's uh, build a company around it and build a business around it as well and that is when i started thinking about it so it was mostly about classroom based training programs and that's what i did uh, throughout uh, 2013 14 15 right uh, 2015 February was when um, a guy called Nathan Grant from a company called as Plural Side, uh, a lot of you may be aware of, he approached me for, um, you know, uh, an authoring opportunity, right? And it was a video course opportunity. And that was kind of something which was new to me. So I thought, let's explore this. And uh, I submitted the audition. And um, then I did not really take it up because I was really afraid of recording videos at that time. But that was the time when I started toying around uh, the idea of, you know, creating the video based courses, right? And I got to know about Udemy and these platforms, Pluralsight. It started with Pluralsight, but that started uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, with that idea that, hey, let's record a video course. And let's, uh, the first thing that first course I actually recorded was... Uh, my training happening live and I just recorded it with audio and then put some slides around it and then you know screen shares and stuff and that is what I put on Udemy in, I think 2016 around that 2015 was when I um, published uh, my first book was published called as Ansible Playbook Essentials well, that was a big milestone I was really happy with uh, everything that was happening but I really back of my mind I was uh, more of uh, wanted to create that video course and you wouldn't believe me uh, that my first really recorded camera facing video course happened in 2017. And uh, this was mainly because I was really, really camera shy. Uh, doing the corporate training was a different thing because you have people in front of you. And, um, you know, it was a completely different experience. The moment I started the camera, um, I couldn't speak. And that continued for a really long time and I kept on practicing. It was really funny because I kept on practicing in front of the mirror, just talking in front of the mirror, uh, talking to just the mirror. And um, it took me a really long time to get that, get into that comfort zone where I could speak to a kind of a object uh, sitting out there. And uh, I am a, I'm a kind of an introvert person in that way. And uh, definitely I was a camera shy. Uh, earlier I was stage shy, but that, you know, went away. Uh, so that was my struggle, uh, multiple struggles actually, right? So uh, stage shy, then I became comfortable talking to the people, uh, training people. And, you know, that forced me to go and talk to people. Um, creating the video course was a journey for me because, you know, it was a completely different experience and uh, it took me a really long time, multiple takes, just practicing, practicing, practicing. And uh, then my first video course came out uh, on Udemy, apart from my recorded version. Uh, that was in 2017. And 2017, 18, I kept on adding a few more courses, like started with Docker, then Puppet, then Chef, I think, you know, I added a few courses out, out there. And uh, 2018, I remember we launched, uh, I've been in Bangalore since, even since there. And uh, we had an office, uh, a proper large office because I was running a consulting firm at that time. I was, um, you know, um, we had team, we had a large office and uh, I we run uh, classroom sessions as well. And then we decided to do a, a program called as DevOps mini degree. In fact, uh, this is the face from the Facebook page, which has a date of 2018. Uh, that's what I discovered today. And then uh, I, in fact, have a brochure of that. So you can see that this is a 2018 brochure. I still, uh, I was just going through it and I had a laugh, a smile on my face uh, looking at this. And you can see that it's um, actually, if you really look at it, it's not too different than uh, what we do today as well, because things have not changed too much between 2018 and now. Uh, they've just gotten better and, uh, you know, things have gotten clearer. But for us, it was very clear at that time that Kubernetes was the thing, Docker was the thing, Terraform was the thing. And uh, you, you look at it, it's been relevant. So this is what we do. And uh, we've been pretty decent at uh, predicting the direction in which things are moving. And uh, um, in fact, uh, this was the, you know, kind of uh, we uh, run this one iteration of this program called as DevOps Mini Degree. Uh, we used to call this as a flipped classroom program where we wanted to try a 
hybrid approach where you have the classroom sessions, then you go back, then you study. Um, and uh, this is the old model versus new model. You can see that and it really sounds very funny now. Uh, but yeah, there was a flipped classroom was a thing at that time. And uh, we had courses, of course. So all of these were already there. Um, and, um, you know, and then we said, uh, okay, so you uh, go and learn uh, the, from the courses. You come to the session, you ask questions, you do projects. And uh, that is the model that we followed, right? Uh, that was the very first um, iteration of um, what we are doing now with the boot camps and uh, the DevOps mastery system now. And it was completely offline, uh, not completely offline, but had a hybrid approach at that time as well. But uh, majorly it was uh, classroom led sessions and uh, that was the DevOps mini degree idea. Now uh, that idea I really liked and I think it was, it had a good potential. So um, it was a, it was for me, it was a time to dream big, right? And uh, I had a bit of a reputation at that time. I was doing corporate trainings for some of the best companies in the world and uh, authored a book, multiple courses, many students. So uh, I thought it's uh, it's time to take it to the world stage. And that was the time I thought about, let's take this and approach someone who can take it to the world stage. And I started talk, thinking about who can I approach, like, you know, there was LPIC certification, which is already there. And there was a Linux foundation. So let's say I somehow I got a hold of certain people in Linux foundation and they forwarded me to someone else, like a director of the training. And I took this conversation with them. And you can see that uh, this conversation, this was my email actually. So let's, uh, it's time to create a Linux foundation, you know, certified DevOps engineer, uh, take it to the world stage. And um, that conversation started there. It became interesting, but it never worked out in terms of that direction because Linux foundation did not want to take that direction specifically, um, like building their own specific certification on DevOps and so on. Um, so that did not work out and nothing happened for a few months until I think March or April of 2019, when the director um, and head of uh, training at Linux Foundation approached me with this new opportunity. And this is one of my, uh, you know, I, I just grabbed it because of one of the uh, biggest breaks that I have in my career, like uh, publishing a course, working with Linux Foundation and being published on edX was a big thing because you can't just go to edX and publish a course like you can do on Udemy. Um, they accept only from the top universities of the world and uh, they or do work with Linux Foundation. And uh, this happened that time and they approached me, uh, Linux Foundation said, can you build this course? We want to refresh our DevOps and SRE course. And along with that, um, uh, we built another course uh, that was the first uh, course, which is like a paid course that uh, Linux Foundation offered. Um, that was my first uh, paid course that I built for Linux Foundation. And the uh, edX course is like uh, uh, kind of a, is available for everyone to take as free. And this was more of a, uh, another break, big break that I got was working with Linux Foundation, building courses for them. And this was the first course and this is my PR release. And I'm really, really proud of it because this is one of the biggest breaks of my life. Kind of um, uh, starting as a Linux enthusiast, uh, working for Linux Foundation in my life, I had probably wouldn't have imagined uh, when I started my journey back in my college with Linux in 2002. Um, and here I was 17 years afterwards, uh, you know, having um, a course published with Linux Foundation, uh, the top uh, uh, out there is right in, in this field. So that was a really proud moment for me. And uh, that was my big break, but um, this certification thing never happened that I really wanted to work on the mini degree and the system and really, uh, so my dream, uh, I think since 20, um, since beginning, it's been about, uh, I, I, if you look at all my work that I've done, it's all about DevOps, right? I've been a DevOps guy uh, and I really want to continue um, being so uh, as well, right? And this started even before DevOps was uh, created as a keyword. And uh, uh, my vision was always to build a holistic program, which would help people master DevOps skills and give you everything that you need really to master master that. Take a very holistic approach. And uh, that uh, was the idea behind DevOps mini degree. That was the idea behind, uh, you know, approaching Linux Foundation with the certification. The certification did not happen, but I ended up creating five more courses for Linux Foundation. 
and uh, then arrived 2020 changed the world all of us know uh, what you know uh, after covid so there is a life after covid and uh, before covid and life after covid which is completely different now right so we can all kind of um, uh, was a pivotal moment for a lot of people 2020 when um, covid happened i think i was um, my kids were just born actually they were 3 months old and fortunately, I got a chance to take them and uh, go to my parents' place and, uh, you know, um, and uh, uh, because they were at uh, their grandfather's place uh, with my wife. And I um, just in February, I went uh, to Jaipur, got them. Uh, we were on a flight. I think that was the time when uh, the first case in India happened and in, that too in the same city, Jaipur, it was detected. And uh, but we... Uh, you know, fortunately could um, get back to my parents' home. Uh, it is a small town in uh, the state of Maharashtra in uh, India. And I was, uh, uh, we were there during the COVID first eight, nine months. And I was literally working out of first few months. Uh, there was no more, no more, more work because I was traveling. I was doing corporate trainings and uh, all these companies that I train at uh, were figuring out what to do with their own employees uh, forget about trainings so nothing happened for between i think february march to june july and then i started getting my first training online and then everything else happened online and then um, you know things started changing right because uh, companies d discovered that you could actually have people from all over the world attend the training now and um, you know i had uh, people from uh, different parts of the world um, for certain companies like someone from us someone from europe someone from uh, southeast asia joining the trainings and all of that happened between 2020 2022 uh, and that was a time when i was kind of uh, mid 2020 onwards it was mostly about just online trainings creating more courses uh, did three more courses for linux foundation and mostly about being that. And that was my favorite thing. And uh, fortunately, I would say, you know, kind of a positive side of COVID for me was I got to spend a lot of time with my kids during their first, you know, uh, two, three years, uh, really. And I really enjoyed that. And it was a bit of a task, you know, parenting twin boys is uh, kind of uh, a challenge, but it was fun at the same time. So it was mostly about uh, focus was on uh, priority was always with the kids and then I was doing courses live trainings and that is what was happening till the end of 2022 really right and that's when I started uh, thinking about hey let's get back to my mission uh, which was about building this program which was more holistic and uh, you know I had a lot of courses uh, you know in my kitty already uh, but I knew that courses uh, alone is not going to be enough and that's when the DevOps Mastery System, uh, the 1.0, was born. And that's when we started with those, uh, you know, courses, coaching, you know, um, those uh, four components, courses, coaching, you know, challenges and uh, the community, right? It was not just about, uh, you know, and I wanted to build a method and a model which can scale, which can reach to probably a million people out there. And uh, that was the kind of a vision I started that with. Um, and it's time to really bring uh, the dreams into reality in 2024. That's my uh, that's my goal uh, for the 2024. And that's when we are bringing to you the DevOps Mastery System, the new version of it. Uh, before I unveil the new version and the vision for that, um, let me uh, talk about what we have so far here. Uh, our system, the DevOps Mastery System, has four components right now uh, as well. Courses, coaching, challenges, and community. So we, I already had the courses. So I added uh, the coaching component. And that's when I started uh, doing these live sessions, the weekly sessions. We started on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Along with the challenges, uh, we did run uh, multiple versions of the hackathons, like three iterations of hackathon. Uh, we started with this community component as well. So what seems to, if I started reviewing this work, um, you know, around October, that was a time when I uh, took a break after just working on these things for the eight months, uh, before that eight to 10 months. And uh, that's when I took a break and let's, uh, you know, sort of 
kind of rewinded everything and started looking at thinking about uh, what is working, what is not. So what seems to be working uh, so far is uh, um, the courses, I see them to have value before the people who can do the self-learning, especially. Uh, the coaching component seems to be helping partially, right? So, what se so what seems to work is kind of partial things right now. And uh, the challenges uh, um, have been useful, especially the Kubernetes challenge that we run, 50, 50 days Kubernetes challenge. I still get requests for the people who say that uh, when are you doing the next challenge and so on. So that seems to be working. Hackathon seem to work partially. People come to the session and uh, uh, start doing stuff. But uh, what is not working so well is what is more important for me to solve. And that is where um, one feedback that I had was, uh, hey, um, we, you know, let's say I join your platform and uh, a lot of courses out there, but I keep getting lost and I don't know because I, I'm a starter and I don't know how to navigate. I don't know where to start. Uh, I just see too much. It's too overwhelming. So I, there was a lack of always the guiding paths, guided paths. Uh, the challenge seems to be useful, but the completion rates are pretty low and uh, I've been trying to figure out why. Uh, and this is so far, you can give me a feedback of course, but this is so far, uh, what I think is one is the complexity because we simplified the, in the second iteration and the third iteration and seems to be, we are trying to squeeze too much in the three months. Uh, we need to take it at a slower pace and deep dive deeper is what I think uh, we may have to do. And uh, that's what the plan is. And uh, the other challenge I see is uh, the lack of access because we have this, I have to create a tiered membership model in order for uh, this business to be sustainable. So far, it's been money going in and uh, I still have to focus on the corporate training for that reasons. So, and I'm investing time, money, efforts, everything. So um, it's always kind of a, you have to create some tiers so that you have the lower entry point for the people to make it accessible. And that's when we created this silver membership to make it a little more accessible, but we had to limit it because we made it lifetime, right? So that was the reason why I had to kind of made it, um, make it very limited and so on. And that is a source, has been a source of problem for a lot of people who really want to dive deeper, but uh, lack access because uh, they don't have access. They have to go to the gold and for them to make that jump is kind of a, something that they have to think about. And um, part of that reason is also the tier and the price pricing structure that we have, which is more of leaning towards lifetime. And we also had challenges from the platform side where we couldn't support the subscription uh, yearly model earlier with, with the new platform uh, that we introduced last year. So I introduced the platform, which has a lot of features like gamifications, which we can unveil and uh, start using now. Uh, but there were certain limitations to that as well, right? And uh, also the course refresh rate has been a challenge um, because of my schedule and getting busy with this thing and not having a proper structure, trying out multiple things, doing marketing, doing everything else as well. So the course refresh rate has been a bit lower uh, side, um, updating the courses. And those are the things that I really want to fix. Uh, whatever is not working, first is uh, if there is anything else that you see is not working or have a feedback for me. Uh, it's time for me, you to give me the feedback as well. And you can send out email um, or reach out to me any which way uh, that you can, right? But uh, from what I understand are the issues, uh, those are the things that I want to iron out. And that's where I've been working on the new changes and the plan uh, with a new plan, with a new membership structure. And that's where we have this new membership structure that I'm going to unveil to you today with a new system and a new version of it, right? And here, uh, this is where I've been busy because I had to revamp the platform, bring in. So there are a lot of changes that you do not see really uh, on the front end. There are new changes that you now see, but for the last two months, there were there have been a lot of iterations and changes which have gone into the underlying platform, which you really don't see. And a lot of investments, a lot of plugins, a lot of code. In fact, I ended up writing a, a plugin, um, a PHP WordPress plugin, um, just a a week ago because I couldn't find anything uh, which could get things done. Um, I just sought help of uh, AI, ChatGPT, uh, wrote a plugin, it did work, and that's how uh, things are working. So a um, lot of investment, a lot of revamp in terms of what the components of the platform, 
And now we do support the yearly model, the subscription plan, um, anything uh, that you um, wish, we can support it. And that makes it more accessible. Uh, that makes it more affordable. And my vision has always been, the mission has been uh, to reach out a million IT professionals. And the only way I could do that uh, is to make it accessible to all. And especially uh, coming from um, a third world country, the tier three country, if you look at the PPP um, purchase power parity scale, uh, coming from India and looking at, you know, talking to the people, I just got on a call with one person who said that, hey, I, um, you know, I just graduated. I just finished the college. Uh, I don't have money to pay. So, you know, but I'm going to borrow the money and pay into this. And, um, you know, so he's really interested. And that's what I really want to do, basically make it available, accessible to all. And the previous model, which had a lifetime access, uh, did not make it possible for us. And that's when all this revamp which has happened is really helping me to structure it better because what we are going uh, into is a yearly and a subscription model. And uh, this works best for all because I think uh, um, you can get an entry at a lower price point. You get much larger content library that you have accessible at that price point. And um, I do have motivation to refresh things and make things better every year. Uh, works out better better for us, you as well. And you can see the value. If you see the value, you can subscribe, uh, you know, continue the subscription, then the yearly renewal. And uh, that model, I think, will work out better. And that's the thought process behind coming up with this new pricing points as well as the new model, uh, new structure as well. And uh, uh, right now, the lower price point, the what is equivalent of silver membership has much more content. In fact, the entire course library that I've built is already available to you at that uh, level. And that is the biggest change. I think we are removing the barriers for you to remove, uh, complete the challenges so that you don't have to worry about, Hey, uh, I don't have access to this. Um, and we're going to remove the complexity as well and make it longer, uh, challenge like the DevOps bootcamp, break it down into multiple things, uh, topic wise bootcamps maybe. Uh, and that's, uh, what the vision is for 2024. Uh, so revamping of the platform was a, probably the biggest deal uh, that is not visible on the front end, but we do have something in the front end, which is visible to you now. And that's going to definitely help you this year. And I'm going to unveil that system to you uh, where we have roadmaps and journeys. And I think that's my favorite uh, part about what we have as part of the newer system, because uh, we're removing the a uh, problem where we don't have lack uh, guided paths. This gives you uh, where to start, pick up your journey, set that journey, gives you the visibility, uh, gives you step-by-step -step what you need to do. And you can go ahead and do that. We're going to make this better, but we're getting started with that uh, process. We are building these roadmaps and journey. So far, we've been just talking about the roadmaps, but it's time to implement it in the system and give you those guided uh, roadmaps and so on, right? Now, what is DevOps Master System 2.0? Uh, we have existing things that work well and would work well if we do things better, right? Of course, the courses will be there. Coaching will continue with the weekly live session. Just toy around with the newer formats. Uh, challenges will continue. I'm toying around with the idea of calling them as boot camps and uh, really... Uh, having a slightly in-depth sessions um, around one topic a month or something on that line. But those missions will be similar. So you are uh, continuize things, you, you know, um, orchestrate it, you set up deployments, you set up pipelines, you, you know, implement everything that is needed just with a longer duration of time and you dive into each of the subtopics. And that's uh, going to be the news face of the challenges that we bring in from January. I'm going to unveil the challenges probably next week, but um, um, Stam, I'm thinking about how to implement it and any ideas are welcome. Community component will continue. We will try and make this better. In fact, I'm trying to think about uh, when we do the challenges or boot camps, we introduce a grouping system, like some sort of a triads or some sort of um, kind of uh, hives or you know, um, like houses that we have in the school. So we want to group 
you together and have you do work in the groups and uh, that may work out to be better also will help you help us activate the community that's really something i'm keen on doing because i believe the real power here is building your own network building your community being part of this and helping each other uh, to grow better so that's going to be our a uh, component that we'll continue to work on and see how we can make this better. And uh, then the certifications and uh, chat GPT or AI are going to be the two new things that we're going to introduce in the next year. So it will happen slowly, but it will definitely happen surely. And I'm thinking about how we can introduce that. One of that is uh, uh, when I redo the courses and the good thing that I did not do refresh the courses for a while. It's good because now when I start refreshing the courses, each of the course will have um, a component of uh, AI and GPT, how you can leverage GPT to, uh, you know, uh, learn that particular topic or implement something on learn things better. So it will be part of the courses. There will be more things that we will discover as the story of AI unfolds. We're keeping track of it. Uh, I'm talking to the people who are experts in AI. Uh, some of my friends who did some startups in AIs and uh, they're experts at that. And I'm trying to come up with ideas where we can implement it. And that will be part of our next level of membership, which will be uh, the Ninja membership that we have, right? Uh, whatever comes in more. If it is part of the courses, you'll have access to uh, the existing nerd membership, the first level membership itself. So certification wise, uh, we're going to do two things. One is... Um, and this is where I've been talking to all my publishers and all that. And I've received the inputs that all the courses that I have are good, but you have to realign it so that uh, it caters to a particular certification. The topics are almost there. So I just have to work on a few more topics. I'll have to add the component where we add the guides on certifications, like, oh, what do you need to do with step-by-step for this certification and that. So all the courses will be revamped, like from Linux and system engineering, Kubernetes will be aligned with CKA, CKAD, uh, Docker will be aligned with it. So even if the certification is something that you don't want to take, if you want to go for it, you will have a way to prepare for it through these courses only. So all the refreshes that happen in 2024 will be aligned with the certifications. All uh, the courses will have a GPT component as well. And beyond that, we want to build our own certification and badging system that will be again introduced as part of that uh, mini degree. So I'm going to bring the mini degrees back, uh, which will be a DevOps mini degree, maybe a CloudOps mini degree, uh, but definitely DevOps mini degree as well as uh, SRE. Uh, so that will be a certification path where you go through the courses, complete the courses, do a large project, capstone project. That's where the new application that I've built will come in. And if you complete that, you would be awarded with the degree uh, or some sort of an equivalent of certificate uh, concept. So I'm thinking of ideas related to that. We'll also probably convert uh, existing gamification points to credit our system, like it is followed in the universities all across the globe, the credit our system. And uh, we'll think about how that can work towards certification. Uh, as well as GPT, this, is, this story is going to unfold. Uh, in 2024, and we'll try and explore how we can integrate things uh, into our existing platform. But we already have a lot of components which are going to help us towards gamification, certification, everything is there. That's why I spent a lot of time in this platform since last year. In fact, we, we are not leveraging everything, but we have the power out there where we can create the certification even today if we want. Um, we can tie it up with the real badging system, which you can which are integrated with, you know, you can post it on social media, verifiable badges and stuff like that. So that will come in as well. So this is the vision for DevOps Mastery System 2.0. And so far we are here where uh, we already have the courses coaching. There will be the next version of the challenges starting January and community. And this goes as part of our first tier of membership, uh, which I'm going to unveil to you. Um, and we have three levels of membership, by the way, just to uh, give you an idea of what we are building here. Geek, Nerd, and Ninja. Uh, the Geek is just to get a glimpse of the mastery system. It will be a really low price point uh, for anyone to get started and just to get an understanding of what is inside, right? It's mostly that. Um, we may convert it into a trial period or something like that as well, but that's just to get a glimpse of it, right? 
Our nerd membership is where the core of it is, the crux of it right now. And that's what I would recommend you to uh, take as well uh, or switch to. If you already are a member, I'll talk about that, What, uh, how you switch as an existing member or should you switch or not as well, right? But what we have already are the guided roadmaps. So this is the roadmap that we have, right? And I probably have talked about it as well. So you start as a starter and then move to uh, DevOps and SRE. And you know I've added more milestones here where we start as a starter, but you uh, first milestone is a sysops where you have learn about Linux, networking, scripting. Um, then you have cloud ops where you learn about AWS as your and Terraform. Ansible is optional now based on our research now. Um, you can do it only if it is necessary, but otherwise AWS, Azure, uh, AWS or Azure, I would recommend AWS to start with and Terraform definitely useful here. And uh, then comes the DevOps uh, milestone where you have, or each of this is a journey. You can think of it as a journey. You take a sysops journey or a cloud ops journey or a DevOps journey where you learn about uh, containers, orchestration, CI, CD. Um, then you go to the advanced, take the advanced DevOps journey where you add more stuff like GitOps, DevSecOps, Service Mesh with Istio. Uh, then you take the SRE journey where we are going to add, this is where I'm going to add the course on reliability engineering, chaos engineering, performance engineering, advanced level observability system, maybe Python scripting. So if you're thinking about scripting and Python, this is a good time to get into that, not before this, right? Because even if you're starting with a career, thinking about doing too many things right at the beginning, it's not gonna lead you anywhere. So this should give you a very clear path that you start with the system engineering, cloud, CI, CD, containers, then you take the more advanced path. Once you are in a job, this is where you should get into a some job here. And then you keep on learning on job and get, move towards uh, advanced DevOps and SRE related topics. And this SRE path is what I want to have ready by the end of 2024, apart from all these courses being refreshed uh, till here. That's the vision. That's going to be the journey. That's the roadmap that you can unfold. And when you see this roadmap, this is what I have converted into an actual system which you can implement along with all these courses that you see here which are already part of it right so when you go to um let's say the newer system which i'll unveil to you here and this is all so you go to school of devops you don't have to go anywhere else no club.schoolofdevops.com anymore and you go from school of devops and log in i'm already logged in so i go to the dashboard and uh, this is the dashboard that I've built. Uh, this is a recent thing that you will see now. And this is how it's going to look like once you have it configured properly. And what are the components that you see here? You have access to the courses, which you can. So this is like a North Star for you, right? So you log into it and you see uh, where you are at. The last course that you're working on, you already have an access to it. You don't have to go to many different thing, places here from here. You see your next milestone or the journey. Uh, so I've selected DevOps as a journey and based on that, I see what I have to do next. And you, uh, this gets unfolded and checked as I complete those tasks. That's part of our system. And this journey that I'm talking about will show up as the milestones and I can unfold those milestones and I'll see what I need to complete like sysops and cloud ops and DevOps. And those are the journeys that you see here as the roadmap. And this will differ from, you know, what roadmap that you choose because you may either go in the path of being a DevOps uh, engineer and SRE, or you may have, uh, uh, you know, you may be a developer and we may say that, hey, I don't want to worry about sysops and cloud ops. I just want to understand CI, CD and maybe GitOps and uh, service mesh and those kind of things. So for you, just picking up these two journeys are useful and how you can do that is very easily. I'll just show you a demo of that. And this is where I've created an onboarding quest, a newer onboarding quest, which gives you an idea about how to do go about it. So all you have to do to change this journey and the roadmap for you is uh, go here and switch. So I can say, oh, I want to select my journey where I want to switch from DevOps engineer path to a DevOps practitioner path. And instead of a DevOps engineer, maybe an advanced DevOps journey is what I want to start with. And once I save it, uh, and this is when I say this platform and the backend and all the system that is behind it uh, has been working well. And this code is what I was talking about. I've written a custom plugin to make this happen, this conditional, some of this conditional stuff and all that. 
And uh, this is what happens. So when I switch my journey and you have a capability of doing that, you know uh, what is your goal and you just come here. This is your North Star. You come here and look at your journey. And this gives you an idea about where you have to go next, where you stand. And you can even uh, dive deeper into it and each of the component by going to this journey and looking at oh, what I have to complete in this, uh, what I have to complete when I get here and uh, so on and so forth. Right. So that's the guided path that we are talking about implemented. Uh, so this is basically uh, this um, path or roadmap implemented with here. And uh, as a developer, this probably is how you will look like. We'll try to make it better based, based on the feedback, but this is where we are getting started. And <clears throat> if I switch the journey back and say, I want to go take the DevOps journey, but I want to start as a cloud engineer. Now my view will change automatically. Uh, so this is what you'll have to play around with. And every time you want to switch your journey, you come and set that journey and that journey is what you start working towards and you exactly see what you have to do next. Uh, what are the things that you have to complete? And that's uh, how you can get started with it, right? And you can see all the components here, right? From courses to community to challenges. Challenges, I'm planning to trying around this concept of groups and see how we can use them uh, to conduct the challenges. So all the communication related to challenges, recordings, everything can go into one place. Uh, you will probably have access to, oh, uh, I'm doing taking this challenge. So what are the courses related to that? You will probably see it right here. So that is something I'm still figuring out how to implement and can we implement with this system. But that's uh, uh, what you will probably see changed uh, in some time. And this is the activity is the same page that you had earlier as the home page when you logged in. But uh, this was just more about updates, but not really a very useful data. Uh, but all of this also, all your points and everything will also show up. So the dashboard gets enhanced. So this is where we start. And this is going to get enhanced because all your achievements, badges, points uh, will also show up. So we're going to add gamification, more of gamification to make things more interesting. And uh, that's the direction in which we are working on, right? And that's one big thing, uh, the dashboard, the North Star that you want to build. Uh, we want to build for you. And uh, that's, uh, I hope that kind of helps you, uh, you know, to use the system better and make it a kind of a useful um, a one page where you see everything or get a gist of uh, where you stand, how things work and so on. Uh, if you are logged in already, you can just go to your profile, go to my journey and select your roadmap and the journey, and you can play around with it and see how this works. Uh, give me feedback. If it is not working last, last week, we had a problem reported by Atul. Uh, we fixed it immediately after the call, but, uh, should be working for you. All you have to do is set your journey and the milestone from my journey. Uh, do you think this is useful? Yes. No, you can put it in the chat. That's one big thing, right? So that's our um, system. And uh, behind that, uh, we have everything ready to go to implement and execute the vision. Uh, so I have built this system. It's almost ready. Everything is almost in place, uh, like the way I wanted it. Now it's all about, um, you know, uh, making sure the content is refreshed, new content is added. Uh, and we make things better and better from here on, right? And that's where I have set the vision. I have done all the groundwork for 2024. 2024 is going to be a big thing where we uh, kind of take it to the next level and make it into a complete system, which works for you. Uh, it helps you get where you really want, right? And that's why uh, we have this dashboard, right? To help you get where you really want. And my role is to facilitate that and build things uh, that would work for you. So if you have feedback, inputs, uh, feel free to reach out to me. We're always uh, you know, eager to hear uh, from you uh, what you think, because this is what I think works and what does not work, but what is working, what is not working, uh, I would really love to know from you. Uh, so how do you get started with the system? Uh, by the way, we have all these courses, right? And courses are now categorized under uh, different uh, um, career paths. So you can take cloud ops journey. You can take DevOps journey. I'll probably add the sysops journey as well. 
and based on that it will uh yeah i think i'll categorize this as with these journeys in mind right so cloud ops is ops devops is sorry so if you're taking one journey you can focus on uh what all is needed for that journey and uh, look at all the courses only relevant to that and not everything else right and uh, uh the first level like this is just to get a glimpse of it so really there are two levels of membership that you need to consider either nerd or ninja ninja is where i'm going to build uh, the certification chat gpt and this will unfold so it is not ready yet uh, it is not completely ready to unveil so right now really we have uh, one membership simple uh, to get started with and uh, that's when uh, how does it work for the existing members how does it work for the next members so i'm just going to talk about that very quickly if you are a silver member you will get a lot of benefit by switching to this new level of membership the nerd membership uh why because uh one of the biggest problem has been uh lack of access and i could not provide lifetime access that price point at all because that is not fair um for the content and uh, so that's why we couldn't do that implement it at a lower price point but now that we have a subscription model you can benefit definitely out of it because you will have access to all the courses all the courses as in let me just walk you through everything that we have in terms of the courses right so um right from our uh introductory course that is the devops mastery blueprint i'm going to redo this now with the new system uh ai assisted devops mastery is already there uh we did publish it the first version of it i'm going to iterate over it add more stuff right now it is about six ways of using devops to uh learn you know um gpd to learn devops better but uh, there are so many things happening in the world of devops really interesting uh, things are happening so i'm going to talk about that and add more stuff here in fact uh, uh, yesterday i logged into aws and i see now aws has introduced a ai system where you can the gpt version of uh, aws specific thing and you can assist ask for assistant run queries you know uh, get more help get more relevant information and that's what is happening with uh, devops in general devops is being uh, sorry ai um forgetting ai in general ai is kind of getting part of every single thing so i have a system which integrates like when you become a subscriber it sends a uh, 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 a trigger and it updates um the email system it updates the uh, membership portal it updates a lot of other things right and it's a system called zapier now there i have to create these connections i can just uh, make it a conversation ask ai earlier i had to go through configurations like multiple steps and today i can create a something called as a zap very quickly by just saying that this is what i want to do and it builds that zap for me that's what that's where ai is being implemented there i use canva for this images so i can ask canva to do certain thing and certain kind of an image with a certain resolution and it helps me get things done faster right so that's where ai is helping in general so we are going to add this uh, content to this already we i have already spoken about ai uh, earlier but this course is something uh, i'll keep on updating uh, system engineering bootcamp is the one the first one i'm going to refresh with the video content and uh, then we have all these detailed courses and this is what people were lacking earlier right so we had challenges but we had introductory content in uh, let's say ultimate devops bootcamp course uh, whereas if you go to docker mastery it's going to be a completely in depth course on docker uh, there is a kubernetes course it's an in depth course talks about so many things it can help you prepare for ck almost there actually uh, aws essentials i call it as essentials but it's really essentials from a devops perspective because aws is very very vast with hundreds of services but these are the essential things that every devops engineer must know networking compute database storage order scaling uh, there's ansible terraform uh, there are all these linux foundation courses so when i uh, have whoever i've worked with one thing i've ensured in all my contracts all my you know uh, everything that i have done uh, all my work uh i have always ensured that this should be available to my students and my community and we have that provision in the linux foundation contract as well so even though i am not updating anymore uh, or working with them anymore related to the courses um 
it is available to us uh, for our community, all the courses uh, that I've published with them as well, which includes a containers course. Um, this is slightly different as in it has multi-stage Docker files, alternative tools like Podman, Builda, Scopio, Kubernetes native CI CD. I'll probably take these as webinars and talk about them uh, maybe every week or a month, once in a month based on what becomes feasible. GitOps courses on Flux CD. I plan to build one on Argo CD now. Uh, implementing DevSecOps is a wonderful course. Talks about everything related to security. This is an in-depth course. I spent a lot of time building this use case. And this is a very well done course. And uh, you get an idea about how to implement DevSecOps. Um, probably one of the best courses out there uh, on DevSecOps, I would say. I'm very confident about that because... This is a use case that I've built. I've done a lot of research. There's very, very little um, uh, you know, content available on DevSecOps when I created this course. So this is going to give you in-depth understanding with a use case. Uh, if you are a DevOps engineer especially, definitely get started with it. Uh, and all of this, including all the courses that I'm not planning to refresh, like Puppet Chef, uh, I'm not. OpenShift, Istio, I will. Uh, Puppet Shift are older technologies. I'm not really keen on uh, updating those courses, but everything that I've created so far, all the courses are part of this Nerd membership. This is the list price on uh, the website uh, here. And we are going to follow a purchase parity, parity um, pricing model, which will be fair for everyone, right? So that's the model that we want to use. We've started implementing that already. And uh, right now, as a webinar offer, I'm giving it at this price. Uh, that is $99 or it, if you click on the Stripe, um, you know, link, it generally gets converted into your currency based on the PPP uh, values. And it's uh, 4999 plus taxes in Indian terms if you want to get started with it. If you're a new member, that is, right? So for existing members, don't uh, worry about it right now. But if you're a new member, if you're completely new, and if you want to get started with it, uh, these are the links that you can use. And we're going to give this price for the first a hundred students. This is the one for, uh, I'm just going to paste it here. Not memberships. Uh, this is the link for India. There's a pay link. Four triple nine plus tax around 5,800 Indian rupees. And for global, this is the link. This is not for existing members. We always have Amazing deals, good deals for existing members. How does that work is uh, if you are a silver member, uh, you can consider, considering the amount of content that you have access to, I would really say uh, you consider that, right? Uh, the difference though is you have access to small amount of content, like 10% of content that you probably have access to, but it is for five years, right? That's what you have right now as part of that uh, longer term large lifetime deal. So uh, you will be switching to a yearly content. That is something you should be aware of before you get started or switch, make that switch. But if you are a silver member, you, I would say it's worth considering, uh, considering the kind of courses that we have and uh, you know uh, what you're getting. If you are a gold member, you already have access to everything that I just mentioned, all the courses. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have a better deal yet. You already have access to everything. So wait for the better deal. When I launch the Ninja membership next, uh, that's when you uh, can get more out of uh, this, right? So wait till that happens. If you're gold, you're already set. You have access to the new dashboard. You have access to all the courses. Uh, you will have access to the challenges. So you have access to the community. So you already have, are there. If you are a silver member, uh, you can consider upgrading or switching over uh, it is an upgrade because you're getting everything in gold at uh, uh, at the same price, just one year access. Uh, that That is the limitation. But I think that's a fair deal, um, in my opinion. And how do you make that switch is very easy. Uh, again, I believe in automation, being a DevOps guy, and we have automated the system as well. So all you have to do, and you will only see it as a nerd uh, or a silver member. If I'm an a admin or if I'm a different member, uh, this is a newer membership management portal. This is one of the things which was also missing from earlier. So that's when I said a lot of work has gone into platform is visible here. So if I'm a, a different level of member, I don't see that upgrade page at all. Uh, I do see it here because I'm an admin. 
but um, you will not, you'll probably see something like this or a different level of membership. But if you are a silver member and only if you are a silver member, uh, you, uh, where do you, how do you access this management page, by the way, is uh, when you log in, uh, it should be, it is on the sidebar on the left at the bottom as the gear gear mark that you see is that manage membership page. Uh, you probably should see it somewhere here as well, manage memberships, but I'll kind of make it clear. Uh, this gear mark is a managed membership plans as well. You'll find it from here. You'll find it from the left-hand side bars as well. So if you go to the managed membership place, if you are a silver member and only if you're a silver member, uh, you do have an option to switch to the nerd membership right now. Uh, and how do you do that is use the same registered email address and fill in this form, uh, read through this, fill in the form. And when you click on switch to nerd membership, our system automatically validates if you are a silver member and it will automatically switch to the nerd membership. I'll show you in, uh, how this works. So if I say this is my email for this account and if I switch to the nerd membership, uh, you'll see a message and, um, this says silver right now you can see. And if I s refresh, if everything is gone, right, it should have switched me. If not, you, uh, call the support. Let me try one more time. Oh, I have already done this. So it doesn't allow me anymore because I've made this switch. I've switched it back. So, uh, it does work. And I've tested this and it will basically show up as a nerd membership here. The reason why it does not right now is because I have already done it once. So it doesn't do it one more time. So it is one time thing that you can do, uh, because it's been marked. I'm already marked as a nerd member from my backend and, uh, that's why I'm not able to switch. But if you are a silver member, uh, you should be able to make that switch. If you are a new member, you can use the links, uh, first hundred members get the benefit. Uh, if you're a silver member, you may want to make the switch or you can continue with the existing, uh, you already have that plan. So you can continue with that as well. Um, if you're a gold wait for a better offer, that's my, uh, suggestion here right now. All right. Uh, it works. Suresh says, so it has worked for Suresh. Awesome. All the best Suresh and, uh, welcome to this nut membership. And, uh, um, any questions for me? Uh, hey, Gaurav. <clears throat> I'm Gurvinder. Hey, glad Gurvinder. to connect with you. So I'm already a nerd member. I purchased it uh, two days back. I saw so, it. Yeah, I saw you registered recently. Yes, Gurvinder. How can I help so, you? So uh, in um, SAST and DST tools, the, um, the tools which we have covered for the demo, are they like open source? Uh, I'm yet to Everything go there. Source. Okay. Everything is open source. Everything is specific to uh, a particular use case. So if you look at SAST tool, uh, it's a Python application. I'm using a Py, uh, something related to that. Uh, DAST is an open app. So uh, it's an OWASP uh, compliant tool, which is, I think, the most commonly used uh, uh, tool. The Zap Scanner is what we are using for the DAST there. So it's, it. everything is open source. That's when I said I did a lot of research because I wanted to... DevSecOps is a world where uh, everything is a commercial set of tools, right? And uh, that's when I spent a lot of time just to figuring out uh, how to bring this use case, build it, and then incorporate only the uh, openly open source available tools out there. So everything in that course is uh, open source. And I, we did it for Linux Foundation. So when we generally work uh, on a project with Linux Foundation, we try to uh, keep it to the open source tools mainly. Got it. Thanks, Karan. Awesome. Also, welcome, Gurvinder, to our uh, membership community. Yep, excited. Awesome. All right. So, uh, Michelle has a question. After a year of membership, can um, someone come back just to the geek member to stay connected with the community? Well, Michelle, um, there are two levels of community that we have. So, one is the Discord community, which we're going to keep it open. So I'm going to bring all the members from my Udemy uh, courses as well and give them access to the Discord community. So if you want to keep in touch and 
I'm at some point of time, once I have this settled, uh, I'm going to keep on um, being more active on Discord as well. So there will be some community which will be open. And uh, I'm toying with this idea of either geek membership, you can always switch back to uh, just to keep an uh, update yourself updated and be part of uh, the community here, as well as uh, get access to all the live sessions, generally all the webinars that we do. So I'm going to keep one level of membership uh, where you have uh, access to those things without courses, just, you know, uh, being part of the community. So geek membership will definitely give you access to that discord community. You don't even need geek access is what my point was. And uh, you can pick any of that and continue uh, being part of this. So we want all of you to be part of this network for a longer time, uh, definitely. And uh, we will do something about it. We'll keep the geek membership. Uh, we'll have discord community. Uh, going and discord community is gonna um, be more active because i'm gonna start promoting that into my courses i have uh, already have uh, how many um, on udemy and um, my new strategy is where i'm also gonna publish on udemy uh, it'll be a new with new price points matching the same uh, everywhere else as well so there are um, 65k plus students there um, 66,000 now uh, and all the refreshes go here, all the refreshes go here, and the current level of memberships makes uh, all sense everywhere. Uh, Sachin has a question, how many courses are limited if we prefer to stay back in silver apart from switching? Okay, so with silver membership, you have access to mainly, um, you have access to Ultimate DevOps Bootcamp, that is one big course. And you have essential series courses. So essential series courses were consolidated as part of the Dev ultimate DevOps bootcamp. Apart from that, you have access to the DevOps mastery blueprint, which is going to be updated. You do have access to AI assisted DevOps mastery that you will have access to as well. You will have access to system engineering bootcamp, which I'm going to refresh again, make it better. And you have access to the ultimate DevOps bootcamp. So that is what is part of the silver membership. Apart from that, you do have access to the recording archives, all the sessions which happened during hackathon and all that. That is already there. So you can have access to that as well. So uh, beyond that, if you want to dive deeper into these topics and why I say it makes a lot of sense because all of these are in-depth courses, Docker, Kubernetes, AWS, Ansible, Terraform, uh, there will be Istio, there will be CICD is already there. Uh, there is LFD, uh, this is on container, but a different aspect of it. GitOps, uh, DevSecOps, and uh, then Chef, Puppet, and you know OpenShift, Istio. Plus, uh, I'm building new courses. I'm refreshing all these courses. I'm going to build new courses related to SRE. As I just mentioned, I just unveiled that vision. Uh, chaos engineering, reliability engineering, more on uh, uh, performance engineering. Let's see how that works. Uh, observability, definitely. So at least three, four courses will be added related to SRE along with uh, at least Argo CD course. So those will be added next uh, in 2024. Um, and that is what you will be missing. So you have access to Ultimate DevOps Bootcamp, System Engineering, and uh, AI and that Blueprint course mainly with uh, Silver. Hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, anything else, folks? Oh, hi, Gaurav, Nagraj here. Hi, Nagraj. I think you joined yeah, recently think... as well. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I joined on 10th. So I was just uh, awesome. searching in the Facebook, just I was scrolling it. So I got thing and then I subscribed it. Yep. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so currently I'm working in Nokia as a solution specialist. So awesome. previously I had some, previously I worked in a previous small company, like 12 years I worked there. I got some idea of the Kubernetes, like I'm into QA actually. Uh, awesome. So yeah. where uh, I get into working to this Kubernetes, the deployment and but not in depth of DevOps actually. So yeah. when I switched to Nokia also, here also I got some idea, but not into fully into DevOps. So my thing is like i wanted to work into devops like it looks interesting actually so it's that's why i signed up uh, so i went to some of the courses like in some uh, certificates and all i just they have done something and they have put it in the record and the certification uh, but uh, your journey looks 
good and promising guy so that's why i signed up and i started from today onwards i started it and all the things and one more thing gaurav so yeah uh, the thing is like in my membership uh, like 10th i have 2023 it's yearly right or it will be like in the expiry date it shows me 2027 so where's correct or not just i want to check no it should be one year uh, okay i will just check on this and see what's uh, going on on the back end side yeah correct yeah uh, there is an issue so since it is an yearly it will be uh, one year so i think okay. look at the i'll just check on this one okay so and oh, it's it's a nerd membership that you see right yeah yes exactly the membership exactly. level yes yes i'll have a look at that but uh, it's a yearly okay. very, very very clear yeah okay fine and one more thing uh, if i stuck in between the courses or something so so i can i can contact in this forum only right like Yes, so you can join. So uh, from January onward, we're going back to a normal schedule where we have Thursday evening calls for coaching, where you can come and okay. ask questions, and okay. uh, uh, we'll have mostly a Tuesday call where we do some uh, teaching and learning. Okay. So I'm planning to do more boot camps. So all these okay. courses that we have, more of a in a boot camp model where we take up a mission every week, uh, some challenge or a mission every week. and we go through that so that it becomes more like a structured uh, thing that you keep engaged and you can come and ask questions here plus um we'll try to use either the community here or discord channels for um rest of the time like because we come here and meet once in a week but what happens in between is where uh, we want to create this set of forums or use discord uh, to uh, you know communicate and uh, you know get in touch and uh, solve the problems either through the community or i will be involved in that or someone else from my team uh, i'm going to start building that uh, part as well from next year onwards okay okay yeah yeah thanks guru these are the two questions awesome okay so perfect so nagraj welcome to the community again and uh, yeah thanks guru um, yep awesome to have you here yeah. uh all right anyone else has a question or anything to share cool folks so we'll wrap up here we have a lot of new stuff coming in and planned and uh, i'm unveil the vision but there are some components i have not kind of unveiling until it is implemented but uh, you definitely have a lot of exciting stuff coming up in 2024 and it's going to be a big year and it's going to be a year where you would learn a lot and i want all of you to succeed uh with your next milestone that you have and uh, that is the vision uh that's when i would be really really uh you know all of this my uh dream project will come true only if you benefit out of it right uh that's the idea we'll start uh, working on uh 2024 and uh, we'll have one more live session on 21st that would be the live last session of the year uh we take a week off and then we'll start with the new year with the new stuff with the new boot camp model thank you and uh, i'll see you next week on uh, you know uh, on the thursday all right perfect so okay. suresh has a suggestion periodic course update information will really help yes it will all come uh, i'll probably be announced here itself so this dashboard gives me an opportunity to add updates uh, right here and start working on updates because uh, next year is for me is just course refresh uh, year that's why i'm spending a lot of time making sure everything is covered before we get into 2024 so i just focus on the content and focusing on writing more articles and uh, doing more youtube videos related to that as well so that's the idea um that's the vision for 2024 thank you and uh, bye bye i see you next week